This transition is awesome. I love this transition. And I think you've really got to look at, you know, and analyze it carefully to really see the series of shots here that are really working to make this sort of transition you know, work really well. So in this video, I wanna do a breakdown on Eric's Dubai video. If you haven't checked that out already, then there'll be a link in the description below. So definitely go and watch that before you watch this breakdown. This was our first major transition. Now I think it's just done really well. It's super seamless. Now the way I believe this was done was just kind of lining up those two shots. So you need to have this shot here, which would be one shot. Basically he's either holding the camera out of this vehicle or he's shooting from a second vehicle, you know, to get this shot here of the tire. Then for the second shot, he's starting with probably the gimbal upside down with the camera mounted. Then he's doing what looks like to be some sort of, you know, Luma mask here of this wheel. You can see where the red is kind of being removed just here. And then it's sort of, you know, from a mask that's sort of expanding outward, it's sort of then filling the rest of that frame. So I think really looking at a shot like that, you, you need to have the same sort of perspective shots in order to make it work. And then, you know, it's a matter of drawing some masks and kind of make, trying to get it all to time nicely. Again, got another really nice, interesting transition here going from the seagulls to an overhead drone shot of this boat. So this would be all one shot. It'd be probably taken from a drone then you know for this shot here looks like you know done basically like a color key to remove the blue part of the image which would have been the sky and he could have added to the second shot which is the shot here of the boat he could have added a bit of blur because we can see that's out of focus and then comes into focus now if you're someone who's looking to create your own videos and your own video effects then you're probably looking for faster and faster ways to do that one of the ways is by using today's sponsor Envato elements they have lots of transitions and video effect packs that you can basically just download now the great thing about Envato is it's a one low monthly subscription and you basically get unlimited downloads for all of this stuff. The other great thing is you get unlimited access to music, graphics, photos, and millions of other assets. And even better, you can now download all of this stuff for free free using their new seven day free trial, which is available in selected countries. And if you want to continue to use their service, then you can use my special link down in the description below, and that'll give you 50% off an annual subscription. Now also Envato Elements has their own YouTube channel called Envato Tuts Plus. This channel is full of hundreds of free resources and video courses, including Photoshop, InDesign, After Effects, and Premiere. This channel also gets frequently updated with tons of new content. Now for this video, I've also teamed up with Envato Elements and we're giving away a one year free subscription. Now to enter, all you have to do is make sure you subscribe to this channel and the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel. Then just pop a comment down below of the sort of tutorials that you wanna see in the future. You can also add a comment on this video or the previous video that I've uploaded for this month. Then I'm gonna draw a winner at the beginning of next month and I'm gonna announce it on this channel. You know, these little transitions work really well. He just does them really, really well. I think what's going on here is we've got two shots. We've got this first shot here, which is of these lanterns. And then he's done what looks to be some sort of, you know, color shift. So using the Lumetric color, you could essentially just add a keyframe for like the tint or something and change the hue shift of your colors over time. You know, that's then fades into this second shot. Basically you create, you know, a transform. So you're creating two position properties of those two as you're kind of transitioning them across to make up the extra frame. I can see here, these have been reversed. So you've got basically what looks to be right here between this line, you've essentially got a motion tile which continues on the edge of the screen. So that tells us there's been some digital panning across this second shot. And you know, he's done some sort of masking here or with a really big feather on it to try and mask those two shots together. So essentially you're adding, you know, like a digital pan over your videos. 
I go through this sort of stuff in my Motion Effects Pro course. I talk about digital, you know, using a 3D camera, but also using nulls to kind of create that digital motion. You have to do that when you don't have the natural mo mo movement in your shots. So if your shots aren't naturally panning, you have to add that afterwards. That's how you do it. This whole sequence is great here. It's just a lot of quick cuts. He's really good at like picking the exact shots that he needs in order to make this all work. You know, one thing when you're doing any of these sort of transition is matching the, you know, direction. So you need to be matching your camera's direction and generally speed as well. And to make it all work, you can use motion blur, you can use mask with a lot of feather. And if you do that, you'll find a lot of these transitions will just work really well. He's kind of got this shot here, which obviously would have been, you know, twisted 90 degrees. So it would have been facing upward. And as the lights are kind of moving along here, I and mean, that could have been digital, it does look like he's added some sort of glow effect over the top of this shot. You know, twisted at 90 degrees to line up with the fire that's coming out into the hot air balloon. So it's kind of, again, he's masked this out. This would be pretty easy to mask out because you you know, it's got a dark background and using the glow, again, it's just really creative, but like having that glow sort of move through and then that leads into the fire. Again, movement, this is all about, it doesn't have to be just camera movement. It could be something in the, in the frame that's moving. You know, if you've got a car going really fast through your frame and then you cut to a static shot, it doesn't really work, you know, but if you cut to another movement, something else that was moving really fast, if it was going from a car in one shot to a bird or an animal moving really fast in the next shot, that movement can work. You know, these shots can work in that way. This shot here is fantastic. I, I absolutely love this shot. When I'm watching any sort of cinematic video, it's not the effects that impress me. It's the way that it's creatively been, you know, put together. You know, it's having that ability to think creatively about these shots from when you're filming them and then when you're in the computer looking at shots and seeing how they can work together. If I was going to attempt a shot like this, I'd be looking at this as one shot here. So this would basically be a mask that I would draw along here. So the drone FPV shot looks like it's starting in a dive and then it's sort of moving down into you know, following the ridge line. I think if you, you know, from that perspective, if you masked out this overhead shot here of, you know, the shot that he's getting going over the edge of the basket, you can make it work. And I think that's what's going on here. It's kind of lining up those two shots really nicely and it just kind of works really, really well. This transition is Awesome, I love this transition. And I think you've really got to look at, you know, and analyze it carefully to really see the series of shots here that are really working to make this sort of transition, you know, work really well. So this is all one shot here underwater. He's then basically done what looks to be some sort of hue shift. So again, using Lumetri color, you're creating those keyframes for the uh, tint or the white balance, and then kind of shifting those colors. And that allows a nice transition into this shot. So this is like some sort of FPV shot here coming down on top of the buggy here. But before that, it looks like there's two things or there's a couple of things going on. The first is we've got some sort of digital zoom. So the camera is doing some sort of, you know, zoom effect into this area here. So we can see that happening right here. That is so that that fills the screen. So now we've got this, which is a great now transition point where we can add something in. Now, if we just transition to that next shot, it's not gonna work as well. He, what he's done is he's added a sort of cloud layer in here. Now that could be a cloud layer with some, you know, a transparent background. But if you watch the edges here, just watch really carefully on the sides of the screen when this is going on, you'll notice that they're warping. He's added some sort of convergence on the lens. What this does is it basically flattens out that image. It's almost like adding a bit of a digital zoom or a warp zoom to your video clip 
to kind of make those all blend together. Once you kind of layer them all together, I think that's how this shot was done. So that's it for the major effects in this video. There's tons of little, you know, effects and lots of great cinematic shots in there that he's done. If you like this video, I can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you love this video, then maybe consider subscribing to the channel. If you wanna see more videos just like this, then you can check them out over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.